All right. Greetings all. It is Max, and we are back. And we're going to do a special request question. People out there who have specific questions about things, feel free to ask. And we'll try to do a video. And we'll try to make this one a little quick. And it's about taking profits. The old question is, why is taking profits a good idea? Why will there be a huge crash after 100,000? Um, if, the, if the supply is so low, the demand should go up. Why would it crash, right? And the, uh, also about Solana was crashing the other day. And would I be buying more or is it a good idea to buy more when Solana appears to be deflating? So the first one we'll look at is, the, is actually on Solana. As you can see, this question came in yesterday. Solana is up um, 13%. It's in the 163s. Now, Solana has made a, a, a large run, and in my opinion, the price seems to stabilize in the upper 160s to the upper 170s. So until it's at that price, I'm not going to sell anything. And when Solana did crash down to 130, whatever, I, I did buy some at 135. And I did that because I was just buying back into my position. Um, Solana had their network uh, problem, and I took off my stop orders because I knew it was just going to crash. <clears throat> if you can't buy or sell it, and the, the smart contracts and the um, things that were running on Solana couldn't do any business then the price of Solana is going to crap, but it's artificial, right? It's because they have a network problem, and once they fix that, it's just going to go right back up. So I canceled my sell order. It didn't go down. The price of Solana didn't go down. Um, it was still like 155 the entire time. So then I put in a new order around 142, okay? And for whatever reason, Solana was weak, and it dipped down to 130, and it sold my stuff. I happened to be sitting there watching it, and I'm like, oh, okay, let's see how far this goes. Went down into the lower 130s. I bought my position back, okay? And then I'm just sitting here, and I'm going to wait for Solana to go, you know, it's at 162. I might put in another um, stop loss in there somewhere. When it's at, like, 170, I might do one at 145 or 150. I don't know. Um, this is just a portion of my Solana bag, okay? This is the Solana bag that... I may leave it in Solana or I may invest in something else that I like. Okay, this is kind of the equivalent for me. It's kind of my equivalent to my cash pile. It's kind of a slush fund. Um, Solana, I was able to get in at $40, bought some more at 60. I think I bought some more at 70, right? So if I'm selling and I have stop losses around 140, I've already made a killing, all right? So whatever happens with it, and that is protecting yourself and hedging yourself. So yes, with Solana, I did buy in at 130. And from the few different places that, um, channels that I've listened to that like Solana, they're, they all bought in at 130 also. So we're all on kind of the same similar mindset with that. Um, I think that Solana it probably will cool down as it approaches 180, but who knows? I mean, if we go into this huge bull market cycle, like everyone says, you know, who knows what's going to happen, but... I'm going to have my stop losses on, on the altcoins, all right? Now, when you're talking about something like Bitcoin, you pretty much set it and forget it. You certainly can. I mean, it does cost you money to trade these things, right? So if you're on Coinbase Pro, for example, it's a half a percent um, to sell a half a percent buy is, is how their, their system works. So if you have a large amount of crypto, for instance, let's just say you have fifty thousand dollars in Bitcoin, right? Well, if you have your if you have your stop losses set in a way and buybacks set in a way, it's like you're kind of just breaking even. You Bitcoin goes up by a couple thousand dollars, and then you you sell and wait for a dip, and it only dips a little bit. You're really not making anything, you know. It's kind of like, but it's good practice. I didn't make anything on that Sol transaction. Selling at 142 and buying in, I think at like 135 or something like that. Um, it's it's only like a small bag of Sol, right? I didn't. It's just the practice, though. It's the practice of seeing it going in and doing it. You know, I'm not out anything for you know. I made a dollar or two, yay. Um, but it's the practice of doing it and getting in the habit of doing it because what's really gotten me over this last bull run and run up. I mean, I'm. 
reasonably new with playing with larger amounts of money as far as the markets go. And, you know, all the way up through January, February, March, um, April, I didn't really take anything for profits. And that was because I sat on a lot of cash to take advantage of dips. And I was dollar cost averaging on the run up. Now, had I, and I'm also mostly invested in Bitcoin, which you really don't take profits on Bitcoin. You can, but yeah, you know, there's usually not enough movement in there to where you're really, you're really doing as well as like Solana, which goes up 5X or 6X. Bitcoin doesn't do that. It goes up by like $5,000. It's not worth the hassle of going through buying and selling on that little bit. Um, just as, it just isn't. But <clears throat> my failure was not taking profits in that run up, even even uh, buying, well, you know, it ran all the way up to 64,000 or something. And my entry was somewhere around 40,000. So it's not a huge run, right? 50%. And in, in the crypto world, um, that's not a lot, but it is with Bitcoin, right? Because Bitcoin, you're dealing with an asset that costs tens of thousands of dollars. And not taking any profit in that kind of screwed me when you have this mass crash um, where Bitcoin goes all the way down to like 30,000 or whatever it did. Um, had I taken profits, you'd have money to just buy in at 30. I still had money to buy in at 30, right? Because I had other assets that did do huge profits. And I did take some more or less profit. Actually, it was just moving what a typical uh, strategy is for a lot of people who are beginning is you're going to have, you should have 50% of your money into Bitcoin. If you've got a fair amount of money, you know, like a, at least a thousand dollars, you should have half of it in Bitcoin, maybe a little, maybe 40%, right? Maybe 40%, but that should be your main bag. And of course you should always have cash, like 10% of your stuff in cash, or at least try to maintain that, um, be aware if you're if you're if you don't have cash on hand. Be aware of that, and be like, what can I sell so I can get cash if I need cash, right? Bitcoin, <clears throat> you don't ever want to sell, but it is kind of like cash. You can get your stuff off the exchange whenever you want it, and Bitcoin's not going to zero. You might have to cash out in an emergency when it's down ten percent, and that would kind of suck, but it's not going to be for the most part not going to be a, such a wild swing without, you know, a gray swan or a black swan. And that's what happens is you get into the thing where the miners were kicked out of China and, and Bitcoin went again from like 50,000 down to like 40,000. And that's kind of a gray swan, black swan event. You want to have money to take advantage of that dip. And you don't want, you want to have money in your safe to where if that does happen and you need money, you have money in the safe. Got it. Um, and that was where my position is, is you want money and cash on hand because if the markets are also doing very, very good, you don't want to pull your stuff off the market. And that's where I'm at, you know. I have a part-time job just to kind of sort of help pay bills a little bit because I don't want to take my stuff off the market when it's making me money. Why would you do that, right? I'll burn the fiat that I have laying around on bills or if we need to buy a washer or we need to buy this or we need to do something, you know, buy lumber for everyone out there who's a craftsman. The lumber prices are back below what they were a couple of years ago. People are waiting for that. So went out and bought lumber. I actually bought, had bought a computer as a backup that I do mining on and stuff. So this is, the market is not doing particularly smoking hot for me to do that, but it's because I have cash on hand from taking profits. Okay, and this is also sort of crossing my fingers that the market is going to go up like everybody intends it to or wills it to or wants it to during quarter four. But <clears throat> during the quarter four run up, I am going to be right there and ready with stop losses on my alts. Now, a portfolio setup should be in an ideal world, right? In my opinion, and also in George's opinion. People who don't know George, um, uh, people who don't know George, he does Cryptos R Us and he kind of just does crypto news, but he does the 50, 25, 25 rule, which 
you know, I modify a bit, but the big one is 50% of your bag should be Bitcoin because that's the end. That's the game changer. And your other bags, as they make money and you make profit and you take profit, rather than maybe taking out the cash, you just convert it to Bitcoin. Okay? You just, just convert it to Bitcoin. And you look at it like a bank account that earns you crazy interest rates, right? Um, with Bitcoin averaging 200% gains every year. You, you, you get your 3 or 4 or 5x on your Solana. You take a portion of that, your initial investment, and turn it to cash. Or you take a portion of that and you turn it to Bitcoin. Okay? And that is, that is what we do. Um, this is what everybody does. Everybody who knows, this is what everybody who is in the investment game. And that is what we, I am doing, investment game. Um, yeah, and the 25%, the second 25% is in large caps like Ethereum and major players, you know, like Chainlink. Um, Solana is probably getting there. Solana, their top 10, yeah. 25% of your bag is that. And then he has 25% small caps, which would be your stuff getting down there past like, you know, the 30 to 100, you know, in the top top few hundred cryptocurrencies would be your small caps. And this is where you would also get your your gambler, your gambler coins and your magic beans would be part of this. And I would actually modify this to say, you know, 15% in those small caps and then 10% cash right now. A lot of people are actually going for 20% cash. Um, but you have money lying around. It's whatever you think, but you should have a plan and try to stick to it. Um, I very rarely stick to it unless it's, you know, right now I'm, I'm like 70, 80% Bitcoin, right? So I'm not even part of the plan, but I don't want to get rid of my Bitcoin. You know, we're all people. It's just like, be aware of the rules. And when you're breaking them, be aware of when you're kind of breaking the rules. I want to look at the importance of profit taking as our next bet. So we have Solana here. And that's the 90 day. We'll do the 30 day. We get the whole run up here. So people were asking if they're buying Solana at 75 when this was happening. You can see back here in August 23rd. So about one month ago, people were asking, Are you still buying Solana? Are you still buying? Oh yeah. I was buying Solana all the way up to 90 bucks. I think I even bought, I bought Solana, I think at 130 even before it crashed this time. I was buying Solana all the way up, but I also bought it like 30 or $40 too, right? So Solana rocketed up and it didn't, you know, it plateaued a little bit and it never came down up until it had hit, what, $188 before it finally people were taking profits. Very unusual, which is why I'm so bullish on Solana. But for instance, let's say you bought here. You bought at $67, all right? And then it's run up and it's $140. Let's see, when was this? You bought at $67, August 26th. Okay, and so in four days, you're already up to $126 in four days, guys, four days. Now, crypto is fast, but that is remarkable. Okay, so by the time you hit $120, now you have a, ch you should be taking profit. <laughs> you should be taking profit and now, this is going to be different for everybody. If you invested $60, if you bought in at $60 per Sol, if it doubles, you can take your original $60 off the table and move it into cash or move it into Bitcoin or whatever, and then you've made your money. You're at zero risk at this point on Solana. So even though, and the reason that people don't do this is greed, okay? Because obviously, if you have twice as much Solana on the, on the thing, when it goes up again, then you're going to make that much more money. You're going to make twice as... We understand that. But it's, it's non-realized gains. You haven't taken that money off the market yet. Okay? So this is where you... In, in it, here's the thing. This is different for every crypto. If you really, really love the project, like I like... I love Solana. It takes a lot for me to sell it, but I'm not married to it. I mean, I'll sell it. Um... You know, it depends on the project. 
But when you're making, when you have made those gains, you need to take some off the table because it will, at some point, the market will go down. It doesn't matter if it goes down up here, right? It took a breather at $188 and then it took a breather. And then when you hit the bottom at 157 over here, then you can buy back in. And it's like, well, I'm buying in at a higher price. It's like, yes, but you made your profit. It's all profit. You buy back in at 157 and then it shoots straight up to $214. Now you're never gonna time the tops and bottoms perfectly, okay? But this is what your day traders and things like that will do is they'll try to hit these tops and bottoms as best they can and trade, 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 trade. And no, we're not talking about that. We're just talking about putting money in something, waiting a while and see, you know, depending on what you feel, you know, waiting a while and see what happens with it. If it doesn't move, you take your money out of the project and move it into something that's faster or that has better potential. Or if you leave it in there and it starts going up, you keep an eye on it to make sure, you know, make sure you know when you bought in and what the price is at. And when you've doubled your money, you need to take some profits off the table, whether it be 10%, whether it be 20%, or if you want to take your in whole entire initial investment off, there is nothing wrong with that. It's what you should be doing. Okay. Yes, you're going to make, um, if, the, if the stock or the, the, the crypto keeps going up, you're going to be so mad. Oh, I just keep going up. And if I had my money in there, but see, you got to remember is you have that money in your hand now. Or you have it into Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin has zero, zero competitors. Zero. None. Bitcoin's never going anywhere. You can't say that about Ethereum. Ethereum's got 20 or 30 really, really good competitors. Bitcoin's got zero. Okay. And Ethereum is, is the next one that's supposedly can never go to zero. And I, d I don't think in the short term that it will either. But if Solana keeps ramping up, Cardano keeps ramping up, its market share is going to dwindle. And it's not going to make them gains like it did. Bitcoin, what's, who's going to compete with Bitcoin? Nobody. Nobody. So you need to be thinking about this. And this is important now because we are into this run-up where everybody is, is going to start the FOMO. And it doesn't matter what the market forces are if it's the retail people and their sentiment as to where the markets are going to go. So if everybody is bullish for quarter four, more mark, it, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that more money is going to come into the market. Um, but if there isn't any substance behind it, and it's just, uh, well, it did it before, so it's going to do it again. And everyone throws their money in the market. It's going to come to an end at some point. And, you know, what goes up must come down. And the only one that I've seen that has ever broken that rule really has been Solana. And if you have a really good project, hey, that's kind of, kind of what happens. When something gets its first start and it's initially launched on an exchange, and it's like 10 cents, but the actual valuation of it, something that's really really good is like a hundred dollars yeah it's not going to take any breaks it's just going to go up to a hundred bucks um but solana is not new run around for a year or two um it may be new that they're they've implemented some new things where they're really getting some traction it's really quite remarkable with solana but not every project is solana you know if you have something like a chain link which typically does pretty good um a chain link goes up and it goes up like 30 or 40 percent you should probably take some profits because chain link is not one that typically doubles and triples in in price um it's a good rocks you don't lose anything though either it is very it doesn't it doesn't tank right so when we're looking at it here if you want to for instance like what i do with solana is you want to hold on to it and say you don't want to sell right you don't want to sell it, but you don't want to get wiped out on something. And we'll just use Solana as an example. All right. So you buy in at $67. Price goes up to, uh, in four days, $120. You've doubled your, your, your amount. You doubled your original investment. But you don't want to take profits yet. You want to let it ride. Okay. So on any real exchange, Coinbase Pro, Kraken, uh, Binance, so you're at 
126. It's super volatile. So what you do is you don't want to lose your in initial investment. So you put a stop loss in there. Um, we'll say 80 bucks. So you get a little profit, right? Put a stop loss in at 80 bucks. The odds of it going to 80 bucks are pretty darn slim. But hey, gray swans and black swans happen. Solana Networks gets flooded with bots, right? Even though that didn't affect the price. But then there you go. And then you, from after 120, it had a dip where it went back down to 109. And nothing, no big deal. You're letting it ride. And now you're going to run up and then it hits its new peak at $150. Okay, well, now you're pretty reasonably sure that it's probably going to stay above $100. So you move your stop loss up to $100 or $110 or whatever. But it has to be a fairly large gap. Because wicks in the market happen. You have flash crashes. You have somebody puts, you know, a million sol on the on the thing and sells it instantly. You're gonna have a big dip or a big or a big peak and it's gonna it's gonna normalize. And you don't want to have a stop loss put in there where your stuff is sold in the middle of the night. You don't even realize it. And you go about your business and then two weeks later you come back and you go, How come my, my sol hasn't done anything? And it it's in, it's in Tether or US dollar coin, right? So you have to have a pretty large stop loss gap. You're really just trying to cover your initial investment plus a little bit of profit. Because once you, got, once you have your stop loss way far up there and you're so far into profit, you should be taking, you should be taking some of that off the table, right? So we we're sitting up here at, at 147, your stop loss is at 100. Hopefully you've taken some profit. And then she goes sideways, and there's the next big spike. We're up at 188, right? And then this one, it went down pretty quickly for whatever reason. Went up to 188, went back down to 157. You're still fine. You can have your stop loss at 125, 130. And then there's your next peak where you're up at 208, which is, I couldn't believe that it did that. And uh, yeah, this was only over for like eight hours or something like that, so... But anyways, as it continues its descend down, right? If you have your stop loss in there just to protect your initial investment, a stop loss at double your initial investment at 125, um, you'd be safe all the way through all of the mayhem with Solana getting uh, hacked, not hacked, but uh, attacked, we'll just say, by people with lots of money to make lots of bots and, and lots of grief for Solana. You make it all the way through that and all the way through the weakness yesterday where it dropped to 139. You, you're fine. Okay. Whatever happens on the market, you don't, this is like stress-free investing. Okay? Stress-free. Where all of, your, all of your ducks are covered. The only time that it gets a little hairy is when you first get out and you first start investing in something other than Bitcoin. Bitcoin is you buy it and you forget about it. And you look at the market like two months later and see what happened. If you're investing in multiple things and you're trying to multiply your money and you really want to in, invest time and energy into research and things like this, and you're moving money into this project and into this project and you're moving things around, you set up your stop losses to be stress-free and you don't want them too tight. You don't want to, you don't want to be up there again. You don't want to say, oh, well, as, you know, Solana is up at hit 180, right? So you're going to set your stop loss at 160. I mean, you certainly can do that, but what's good, probably in 12 hours, you're probably going to be sitting in Tether or sitting in cash or sitting in whatever you converted it to because the markets go up and down 15% sometimes in a very short amount of time. Um, so have your, have your large gap stop losses and take your profits on your way up. I mean, Solana is a great example because in these next few months if everybody on the internet is correct and we have our big run-up where bitcoin to 10 million dollars right whatever if we have this which i believe we'll at least have a small one if if, if you know the hype is that bitcoin's going to 6x again and and ethereum to 10x and all this okay well let's just say it is going to run up all right and the same principles apply whether something is going up 10x, something is going up 4x, or something even goes up 2x. It's the same thing. But things are going to happen very quickly. And you have to take profits because pretty, pretty soon, before you know it, the music is over. Okay? And the bull market is over. 
and things crash down and they normalize out, okay? It's going to be at minimum a 20% drop off the peaks when this bull run cycle is over, at minimum. So you don't want to be all in on something and lose 20% of your, of your unrealized profit, right? You want to take some off the table. And this includes Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to happen like that too. So the best bet for that is knowing that this is going to happen is as, as you get this run up, right? We'll just pretend this is the market in general. As you get this run up, you're, you're taking your profits and putting your stop losses in, right? And then let's just say you have a blow off top and everything loses 20% and goes sideways. And, you know, that's your entering into a quiet period of the market, which happens around tax season every single year. I think, yes, last year was maybe the exception. No, it wasn't. Last year was when we went, when Bitcoin took a huge hit. Um, so we know that come tax time, things, are, things slow down because people need to worry about their taxes, all right? So what happens in that slow period then is all those profits that you took out, then you can try and snipe good deals on Bitcoin. You can snipe good deals on your favorite cryptos and get ready for the next bull run. That's, but if you don't have cash on hand, right? Or if you have, you know, 10, 10x gains on your portfolio and you don't realize profit and the, and the market goes down 50%, right? You're still doing good, right? But it's about capturing the gains and holding on to them. So that is what I have to say. Um, I thought I did a, a video a little bit explaining, yeah, I did, on Coinbase Pro, um, how to set stop losses and limit orders and things like that. Really, it's just something that, remember guys, don't, don't feel bad if you make mistakes. Just try to do things a little bit. If, you've, if you're doing something with limit orders or you're doing something with stop losses you've never done before on these exchanges, um, just do little bits. Kind of like when you send your crypto offline to an offline wallet or something like that. You send like $10 worth first and make sure it shows up. And then you send your whole amount, all right? Do these little things in crypto to keep your stuff and do it the most safe way you possibly can. Um, yes. And if you put money in something and you make a mistake and you set your stop loss at the wrong part or you didn't get out soon enough and you lost a lot of unrealized profits, you know, that's just part of it, a learning experience and you can't win them all. Even the most experienced people still have things where they get out of something way too early and they, you know, it's just what happens or they stay in too late. Most of the time it's people staying in too late. That's just too much greed. And it's hard not to be greedy when you look at your portfolio and you're like, well, do we go to work today or what? Cause we already made the month's worth of, uh, I already made what I was going to make all month, you know, before I, while I was sleeping. And that's the thing that's really important when we're talking about crypto and being successful in life. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki, some of you people may know of who he is. He's a self-made billionaire. And he says, you're never going to get rich working eight hours a day. You got to find ways to make money when you're sleeping. You need to make, figure out how to make money 24 hours a day. And that's really kind of the key. And that's what makes it hard to go to work. When you make so much money when you're sleeping, why are you going to go up and go to job? Like, well, because you need to be productive. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. And money, money you make at your job is money that you can add to the markets later. You know, that's fresh cash supply. What else are you going to do? Play video games? You know, I mean, it's fresh cash supply. And when you're out in the world, you can actually learn things about what is going on in the world to maybe gauge what's going to happen with the market. For instance, I change, I change prices, okay? I change prices at a food place. And I know inflation is due, and I know inflation is 10 to 15%, right? So I, I understand these things, and I have access to all, the, all this information about what's going on with the prices in the local economy, all right? And uh, it helps me make a little bit better decisions as far as investing goes. And that's what we have with that, guys. In other news, quickly... Um, South Korea's got some deal going on. South Korea is pretty big in the crypto world. Uh, very, very heavily into crypto and they have some new regulations coming in there and some of their exchanges aren't, aren't making the, aren't making the cut. So that's September 24th. So a week from now, there may be some weakness in the market because of South Korea and that will be for overnight markets. 
Um, but they're, it's not all exchanges. It's just some of the exchanges. But beyond that, there's really nothing else really happening. Coinbase is listing a bunch of shit coins. Oh, I'm sorry. Magic Bean Coins. Coinbase is listing a bunch of Magic Bean Coins. And I'll also say in closing here that, it, you know, they're Magic Bean Coins like Shiba and some of these other ones. These things do make money. They do make profit, but you don't want to stay in them. In a bull run, it's really hard to tell what a bad project is because everybody is pumping, okay? In a bull run, if something is red, you got to be like, what's wrong with this thing? Did it get hacked or something? Because you could pick anything. If you go into Coinbase and you click it to look at like percentage gains, right, top to bottom, and you click through all the different pages, everything that's like on Coinbase that they're tracking is is up by like thousands percent, right? And they're all time, all time. So it's hard to make mistakes in the bull market. But what happens when you get the dips? What's going to be the most consistent? What's going to be the most profitable? Um, you know, I don't like things that go up and down by 20% every few days. But day traders love that. That's exactly the game that they get into because they make very predictable, very predictable tops and bottoms that they can engage and bet on the bet on the on the crypto, bet on the market. It's just not my bag. It's not what I do. Um no, but I I prefer nice and stable things that, you know, <clears throat> I can check my stuff a couple of times a day and be all right with it. That's a lot of this stuff is what, what suits you the best. And uh, dollar cost averaging portfolio of 50% Bitcoin, 25% large caps like Ethereum and uh, Chainlink and these sorts of things. And oh, and 10 to 15% of your Shibas and your Doge coins and your little stuff you want to speculate on. And then 10, 15% cash, you know, or more, <clears throat> and you can man maneuver that a little bit, but for right now, that is the best portfolio thing because Bitcoin is the most important thing. Bitcoin is never going anywhere. That is the most important thing of your portfolio. <clears throat> now, it may not make you, make you Lambo rich in a month, all right? We understand that the gains are a lot slower on Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is security, all right? Security. And... Uh, yeah. The more money you have in Bitcoin, the more stable your portfolio is. And uh, also, though, know that Bitcoin, Bitcoin also controls the market. So Bitcoin is up, the market is up. It doesn't matter what it is. Bitcoin is down, the market is down. So you need to have a lot of your bags into Bitcoin. And, uh, and that's what we have with that. So I hope I covered. Let me take another look here. <clears throat> we covered Solana. We covered... Um, the huge crypto crash after $100,000 Bitcoin. <clears throat> I wouldn't say it's going to be huge, but here is the market cycle. In closing again on the market cycles and how we're going to rock and roll. Is what, what, <clears throat> what goes up must come down. And, and things have um, bull runs like this. We'll use Solana again. You're going to hit your peak and then you're going to go down. I mean, Solana was going down before they had their network traffic problem, right? And this happens because people sell, and they sell at predictable levels. They like round numbers. So in this case, Solana was sold off at $200 per uh, share or coin, okay? Because people people got in at like 35 bucks. Yeah, they're 10 x they're almost 10 xing their stuff. Yeah, they're going to sell. Their people take profits. People need to take profits, and that's a natural, healthy thing for the markets to do. If people didn't take profits, the <laughs> If people didn't take profits, you'd have like a straight up and straight down run, like pump and dumps, because there's nobody that's buying these coins that are falling because they have no real value except for the pump. The value is in the pump. It's not actually in the coin itself, whereas Solana is actually a valuable asset, right? Not pump and dumped, like whatever, whatever BitBoy idiot says, right? Um, so just know that you're taking profits because you are aware that pe other people will be taking profits. Smart money takes profits. You think that these hedge fund planners just let it roll? You think? The people that are you're in Social Security is invested into, you, the, the, the housing market is invested into, your 401k plan is invested into? No, those guys take profits. 
They take profits in the stock market, roll profits into something else. This is how it's done. And you're multiplying your money. And it's working for you, you know, although sometimes not very, not very good working for me when I'm not, you know, when you're 24 7 working when you're working, double working. Your money is working. And uh, that's, that's just how it's done. All right, guys. So with that, if nothing else, nothing else spectacular happens, I got some work to do. And that will be that. Was there something else that I had today? Coin market, ergo, saber, no. Um, anyone interested in, in um, protocols that are part of the Solana network? I think Saber is part of the Solana network. We're delving into Solana is the Ethereum backchain for a lot of different projects. Cardano is the backchain for a lot of different projects. And, uh, you know, some of these things are what we're working on. And probably next video, we might take a look at some of those. And then uh, hopefully we get this bull run going. So guys, with that, we're going to be out of here.